So I'm a little nervous just because this is a man I've always wanted to meet. He is one of the producers of the original Superman with Christopher Reeve, and he is Ilya Salkin. Thank you for your time. First, tell my um, viewers, how did Superman come to be with Christopher Reeve in it? Well, I mean, it started uh, way before that. It started in 74, where, uh, I don't know, one day out of the blue, I, 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 I thought we were, we were, with my father was my partner then, we were trying to, to do the next film. We had done the three and four Musketeers. Mm -hmm. We were a big I hit. I remember, right. Big, right. big hit. Right. Uh, European film, a gigantic hit. So we were, you know, top of the world and uh, very excited. And uh, Wait, you guys uh, I don't know. We were having dinner in Paris in '74, and they said, "So what are we going to do?" And I said, "Why don't we do Superman?" So he didn't know because he was European, uh, raised. And, and uh, it's about Superman. <laughs> and I said, look, uh, Superman is uh, unbelievable. He's as known as Jesus Christ. Uh, he flies, he has powers. He... Unstoppable, anything. Oh, yeah. Sounds interesting idea. Let me talk to the backers, <laughs> financiers. So uh, he went to talk. Europeans and uh, they all loved it. They all said, "Oh, Superman! Yeah, very they got cool. it immediately. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Superman. Yeah, we know Superman. And in Italy, for example, it was called Nembo Kid. Oh, was, I didn't know that. Yeah, Nembo Kid, but it was Superman. Uh, Ninety percent of the world it was called Superman. Uh, I think it's only in Italy that they called him Nembo." <laughs> And uh, he was uh, very impressed. You know, he came back and said, "Hey, these guys, all my backers, they, they like it." Uh, and so I said, "Yeah, but look, uh, the only way to do it is to do a big movie. Right. You know, we got to do a real movie, not the serials, mm -hmm. not the cartoon. Mm -hmm. It's got to be the real thing." With flying, which is incredible. Which at that time was more than incredible. It was unthinkable. Nobody had done it except with visible wires. Thank you, Peter Pan, right, on right, the theater. Right, right, yeah, right. So you know, my my father and I were pretty optimistic guys. So ah, we'll solve the flying. And <laughs> <laughs> Everybody likes it. <laughs> and so then we went to Warner's who had the rights with uh, uh, DC Comics, right, right. who then was called National Periodical Publication. It was called NPP. And uh, I will say that because I have to say it. They had called it NPP because that was a way of getting... Siegel and Schuster out. Really? Yeah. They were trying to. Why were they trying to push them out? Was it personality conflicts or just no? Money. Power. Money. Money. Wow. <laughs> they didn't want him to get any. These were the guys who created Superman. They made it. Yeah. Yeah. Without them, there was no nothing. No Superman. No film, right. No wow. And um, wow. now this I have to say because oh absolutely I can't I can't forgive them and, and I think it's horrible. Oh. And they really took them out of the credits, of the cartoons, the George Reeves, the everything. No single injury. Like burning the forest. Yeah. And uh, they changed the name of the company. So anyway, they, they made a legal shmelaya and they got them out. And these two poor guys were not making money. And very bad shape. And Warner's absolutely ignored them. We didn't know that. Uh, they didn't tell us. So, you know, we brought, we bought the rights uh, based on Superman. You guys were uh, stuck. I mean, you didn't know. No, we didn't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Created by Siegel right. and Schuster. Because right. they put that in the contract. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. 
They're yeah, they brainer. Smart. Right. They're smart. Right. And uh, do you think they were taking advantage because you're European? You, uh, you didn't know. You never think to ask. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. They, they said, hey, they, they're not gonna pick it up. We're gonna put the names of the writers. Okay. Oh. And that was, of course, a contract that was, you know, between us and them, out of the mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the Siegel and Schuster sure, right. uh, inheritance or whatever. So uh, we didn't know. Well, we made the deal, a uh, very complicated deal with them. With uh, then they changed the name to DC Comics. They had gotten rid of yeah. these two guys, and huh. so now it's the one that exists is DC Comics, who makes all the Batman, Superman, right. and uh, we made the, a very complicated deal where there was integrity of character that he couldn't be in a porno picture. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, all kind of right. stuff. Very complicated contract. It took weeks and months. Oh, we did it. And what is interesting is Warner's, and somebody there told me after, a big guy, fought when they heard Salkinds, who did Musketeers, who are trying to buy the rights to do Superman, a big movie. Uh, apparently, the guy was uh, head executive said, uh, "Sell it. It's a piece of nothing." Now, this was a moment when <laughs> this was after the George Reeves. Right, right. Yeah, it, it was a bad moment for the comics. It wasn't very mm -hmm. hot, mm -hmm. but he said, "Sell it. It's worth nothing." And strange enough, the Europeans believed in it. They did, and they bought the picture. Uh, Warner's didn't, but cleverly they took an option. Some, <laughs> oh yeah, <They're> slick. <laughs> of course, slick. And they took an option, saying, "Okay, if ever they succeed, we can take it for U.S." Uh, and it was uh, very difficult because uh, since the beginning, DC was involved. And they had the right of approval of everything we shot, everything we wrote, you know, and I had to work with them all the time. Mm -hmm. And it, it went okay, they, they were fine, and even very helpful, they, they brought a lot of stuff. And then, uh, okay, there was excitement, we announced it in uh, 75, big announcement in the Cannes Film Festival, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know where. Everybody goes, right, right. and uh, all the foreigners were excited. Warner's was not, and uh, then, of course, it was the comic book, right? So my idea was to make it a real big movie. So I said to my father, I said, "Look, the only way is to get a big writer to start." Uh, big cast after, mm -hmm. etc. And uh, we went to William Goldman. Right. Who wrote, right, uh, right, right. Great screenwriter, right. Great screenwriter. Yeah. Wrote Butch Cassidy. Right. Did he sing? Chinatown, was he involved in that or was that Robert Town? No, that was Robert, Robert Town. Robert Town, yeah, right, right. But he did uh, Sting. I mean, very good. Uh, we had a long meeting in New York with him. Four hours, maybe. Uh, really long. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really. And uh, at the end, he said, "Hey, guys, very nice meeting. Very nice guy." And he said, "I, I, I don't feel it. I don't see it." So then I called my father. I said, uh, "Goldman passed." And uh, of course, he was screaming at me all the time because I was spending money, you know. <laughs> New York, this, that, that's, I mean, a lot of noise. And he was saying, what, what, William Goldman Pass? I mean, so what? There's no, 
uh, what are you gonna do? This is the end. <laughs> Shit. Uh, yeah, we had already paid three million dollars to DC to NTP to, that point, right. to get the, the rights, which we got for 25 years. Yep. Still to this day now, or no, no, just ran out. No, it didn't run out. It was a more complicated story, which I'll come at the end. <laughs> You'll this is fun. I'm getting my second camera together because I'm gonna. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. Okay, so Goldman cocked out and then... Goldman cocked out, and the funny thing is, I had a very big suite at the Plaza Hotel. Corner suite with view on the park. I mean, really, absolutely ridiculous. How much does that cost you? <laughs> Forget it. In, in those days, 800, 900. Today, 3,000. Yeah. If the plaza is still open, I don't know. I think it is, actually. Didn't they make it an apartment building? Yeah, they made an apartment. Yeah, yeah, sure did. But uh, then it was the plaza. It was the hotel. And beautiful suite, beautiful view, the whole shit. So nice. <laughs> big the double room, and dining room. You know. And that's where I had the meeting with Goldman. So after that meeting went down the toilet and... Uh, my father screamed at me, ah, take this fucking suite, then <laughs> you can't get golden, what the hell? <laughs> he, was, he was a tough screamer. And uh, I said, yeah, you're right, suite of shit. I'm going to ask for the <laughs> smallest, shittiest suite <laughs> they have. <laughs> and I called the, 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 the front desk, I said, uh, Look, I want the smallest shitties. <laughs> well, I didn't say shitties, but I want the smallest suite you have. View on the courtyard, <laughs> not on the park, on the courtyard. <laughs> All right. Okay. And they gave us a shitty suite. <laughs> really shitty. I mean, it was like a, like a, like a ridiculous. I mean, the, the room was the smallest. The table, uh, the, the, you know, the <laughs> living room was ridiculous. Uh, horrible view, <laughs> courtyard, and that's where Puzo came. Because I said to myself, that sweet fucked it up. Because <laughs> I don't know, it must have bothered Goldman. Something went wrong there, and I was. Was he, was he a bit of an egomaniacal guy at the time? Or? Not really. He was a nice guy, but I was 26, 27, man. So perhaps it bugged him to see me in this big fucking Ah, I see. Yeah, because like he saw you as maybe like a kid, I don't right? know. Perhaps huh. it bugged him. Anyway, I made this in my head. I said, Puzo, I'm seeing in the shit. <laughs> so Puzo uh, comes. And the shit is sweet. <laughs> and as much as Goldman was elegant and <laughs> very sophisticated, you know, uh, Puzo looked like a truck driver. Really? Yeah. Completely. He's kind of a husky guy, huh? Yeah, husky. Yeah, you know, not shaved, and he had a kind of dirty sweater. I mean, he looked, he, he looked like a truck driver. And, uh, <laughs> and, he's, he, he, and he spoke, uh, I can't do it, but he sp spoke with the Brooklyn accent. Or, uh, how, you, of, how you doing? How you doing? You how you doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so, <laughs> so how you doing? Uh, so what is this about? Superman, you know. <laughs> and uh, we had a long talk. And at the end, he said, I like it. Huh. So he wrote the first draft. So that was it. That was the turn. It was the moment I was able to announce Mario Puzo is writing fucking Superman. Yeah, you're... Everybody said, shit, these guys are not right. playing bullshit. Right. They're not playing games. They're doing a real picture. And the rest I'll tell you tomorrow. I mean, the rest was, you know, yeah. unbelievable. 
histories of shit. This is a, a interview in two parts because of Baz, I didn't expect him to be here. But this is an epic man. He's done an epic job. And I'm, again, honored. We'll be back tomorrow. Very good. Oh, yeah.